the thing about wrestling, I will say, mm-hmm. is a, it, it's very artistic. Yeah. And you can see, and I, and I look, when I look up, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm thinking. It's okay. So, uh, well, some people think I'm like, you know, being. I do the same rude. thing when, I, when I'm trying to like process and talk, I'll start. Yeah. Else. I'm not trying to be rude, but I. Yeah. Yes. I but I don't want to be. Okay. So Thank you. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. <laughs> so, but I think for me, it's, it's artistic. The whole dance is very, it's artistic and everybody's got their form of it. And I understand it because I'm not one. I'm the, cl- I feel like I'm the closest I can be without, I mean, I've been a professional wrestling manager and I've walked out to the ring and I've buried a motherfucker <laughs> and I've, you know, done it the whole thing. You know, I cut a promo, I've done all that. I've, you know, commentated on, 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 on shows, yeah. but like, that's the closest I've, and I've promoted a show once. Oh, cool. And um, so, but that's the closest I, I've ever been. I'd never taken a bump in my life. I have no desire to, I've taken no? enough, no, I'm, I don't want to do that. It's like maybe 30 years ago, I'd be like, let's do it. I would do a, a super fly and I would fucking do it way better than Snoop Dogg. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was upsetting. Yeah. I mean, uh, poor Snoop though. God he bless. went for it. He tried. He, he tried and uh, A for effort. Yeah. But um, like, I don't, I, for me, it's like when I got, to, when I started playing music, the, the whole way I looked at music kind of changed. Mm-hmm. The whole way I approached listening to bands changed. It just was something that happened after I started making records. I don't want that to, that to happen to my professional wrestling. It's like my last escape. So mm-hmm. I don't want to be in it and have to be in the business. And I, I've seen what it does to people. I've seen how people succeed, seen how people sort of fail yeah. or whatever. I don't want to be, I want to kind of be the guy that just, observes because that's like my like I said that's kind of like my safety net in a weird way I don't know you know lack of a better description so I feel like you know professional wrestling as entertainment when it comes to the women like I said I feel like they're everyone's an artist and a lot of the women are very good artists Mm -hmm. you know and it looks like a real legitimate because that's the thing right so that's the hard parts the psychology yeah tell me the story and make me believe in you Right. And not everybody has that. Just because you fucking, you know, shot a bunch of steroids up your ass and you got a six pack. Yeah. And you, you doesn't mean you can be a professional wrestler. I mean, look right. at, you know, I, there, I could name a hundred of them, but I won't because that's just bad, you know. But I watched a, a match the other night and I'm not going to say what program it was on, but it impacted me <laughs> in a way that, uh, wait, did I just give something away? Oh, no, I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> No, but I saw this guy in there and I was like, there's no story here. Mm. You know, there's no, I don't believe that this guy's a monster. I know that the, what, that's what he's it's supposed to be, but I was just like, you can see them having a hard time with each other. There's no chemistry. There's no nothing. And you're just kind of like, ah, fast forward, Yeah. you know? So, but I don't do that with a lot of the women's matches these days. That's good. So. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, not to be biased, but I think Impact and NXT are doing some pretty incredible things in terms of the women's wrestling. Like Impact, formerly TNA, they were one of the first major shows that gave female wrestlers a platform to actually wrestle. Like our matches were longer than four and a half minutes. We had multiple matches on the shows and we actually had storylines. Um you know, I think I had a year at WWE and unfortunately it never went anywhere because right. they wanted me to wrestle as a Japanese boy, be introduced into the cruiserweight division. And I was so stoked on the idea, except in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really make sense because if the men are losing to me, then it makes the men look weak. And if I'm beating the cruiserweights, then how am I ever going to lose to any of the divas? It, so. But it was Vince McMahon's idea and it was amazing sitting across from a table, shaking that man's hand. He's probably one of the most intimidating human beings. I don't know if you've had the chance to talk with him, Um, but yeah, he's he's a pretty intimidating human. And I don't regret the experience, but that just wasn't a place for me. But having had that experience, going to TNA, where smaller budget, but women's wrestling was allowed to grow, um, you know, it, it, I, I, I will 
I would safely say that TNA really changed the trajectory of women's wrestling yeah. and it's grown incredibly since then. Well, I think TNA, you know, not only with the women's wrestling, but the, um, the, um, the, uh, Jesus, why I'm, I'm having a brain, the cruiserweight division, the X in, division, X division. Thank you. We did it. So, yeah. I mean, but yeah, so they did two things there really, yeah. really well. Agreed. Right? So, and I remember, you know, a friend of mine who was a wrestler had a girlfriend at the time, Beth Phoenix. Yep. And we're, they were staying here and I, Beth was so talented. Yeah. Super talented. And I, you know, part of the reason why you could never really see that with her is because they, three minutes, three minutes, go do what you have to do in three minutes. Yeah. And that's terrible. So, but when the girls get the time, you can kind of see it unfold, Yeah. you know? And uh, for me, like, what I wanted to say on this was it's a lot of people ask me about like the, see where I'm at in my life and where we where I feel like Rancid has always been is we've always had our own creative freedom. Right. And because we were allowed to be basically do whatever the hell we wanted to do is one of the reasons probably why we got successful. But the fact that certain companies don't allow that yeah. is why I, I, I feel like that's their downfall. Yeah. You got a, companies like Impact and AEW and these other companies, you know, smaller, maybe smaller than them, ROH, New Japan. Yeah. They seem like they push their guys or maybe not push is the right word. Maybe they allow them, the guys and girls like Serena Deeb. Yeah. Like a, a credible talent. Absolutely. Once again, like yourself, completely slept on up north. And then comes and does something far greater yeah. when they're allowed to do something. It's like, well, yeah, the reason why they were, they weren't, they never were, they were never given the opportunity to, to uh, reach their potential or future potential. Because you know, as well as I do, the only way that you get good at anything or better at anything is by fucking doing it. Totally. And it's like, you can't just do it on the house shows. No. You have to do, be able to, you have to have the whole gamut of experience. Yeah. It's like. You know, the reason why I can go on a TV show and not shit my pants is because I've done it a few times, right? right. It's like, you know, but I still doesn't mean I don't want to shit my pants. It just yeah. means that I just don't. You manage not, shitting your pants while talking. Thank you. I got so, you. yes. So no, no adult diapers for me just yet. <laughs> but anyway, my point, I guess my point is, is that, you know, giving people the opportunity to discover who they are, discover their character, is going to give them it's going to make them emotionally psychologically attached to the story they're trying to sell to make the company fucking money yeah yeah totally it's like that's why i was always impressed with punk because when he was a bad guy he kayfabed every motherfucker yeah like if, hey punk what's going on leave me alone you know just you know what i mean and then he would walk around the house sometimes when he'd stay here and just be i hate fucking randy orton or whoever he was fucking hate that guy <laughs> and just and it's just because he, i'm sure him and randy were you know good friends or yeah. friends or whatever you know but yeah. he just had to yeah it's the psychological thing like i can't transmit this if i'm not really believing it yeah I makes agree. sense for sure so, yeah and Bill so was one of those people too like he really committed to the old school mentality like that's yeah. who he that's what he worshiped that's who he was and that's what set him apart like he was never like a body or, you know, it, his, you know, he was never like a gimmicky dude either besides who he uh, was. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. Yeah. He's the real deal. And that's the one thing. It's so funny because we were just telling the story that other night with the goat. And I always <laughs> think about that with him, but um, <laughs> and if you want to check it, whatever, but um, yeah. So, but that's the one thing I will give to him. And ever since I've known him, he's always been that guy obviously he's grown and matured yeah as you should yeah but he's been that if he doesn't want to do something he just doesn't do it right and it's not like he has that luxury all the time you know to just say i don't want to do it it's like sometimes that's some of the hardest things you can do is say i don't want to fucking do this mm -hmm. you know but that's where really the grit is yeah and I know that like, you know, professional, some wrestlers look at it, well, that's my boss and I got to do what my boss says. 
you know, well, think of the gobbledygooker or think about how they fucking like, you know, then me and Punk were talking about like how Vince McMahon tried to kill Dusty and his whole family. Like, but they did every single one of them, you know, made those shitty ass things work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what was he trying to do to Dustin? Like with the gold dust thing. Oh, agree. You know, you know, that was like a, an emasculating kind of thing. If you really yeah. think about it, if you know the backstory, right? Yeah. And he turned it into one of the biggest things in the world. 100%. So that's talent. Rolling with the punches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you for too much longer. I feel uh-huh. like I feel like we're gonna have to do part two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Cool. This has been fun. Yeah, for me as well. Um, cool. I like to end every episode with the same 10 tailor made questions because it's okay. just turned into the most entertaining part of the show, if nothing else. All right. So okay. are you ready? Yes. It's not a speed round. Take your time with the question. Okay. Okay. What is one beauty product you cannot live without? So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so this was first made for the fact that I was literally just going to uh, interview my female friends. Uh, right. but then I started introducing dudes into the show and I'm not changing the questions for you guys. So. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Why would you? Why <laughs> what would is you? your favorite exercise? Walking. Oh. Do you walk every day? Like, uh, yes, okay. I, I try to walk at least ten thousand steps in. Oh, good for you. Get your steps. I got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you got to keep moving your body, otherwise, you know, you know, it's like. Oh, I know. You know. What is your biggest pet peeve? Not fucking cleaning up after yourself. Are you the okay? So when you I've got a few. Yes. <laughs> I got this a can few. Also a, be a top three. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. When you cook, what? Do you clean as you're cooking? Like if you use it- absolutely. Yeah, I get it. No, I mean, like, like it's There's two kinds of people I, in this world. It's so hard when I'm in a situation and I'm watching somebody cook and they're not cleaning as they're going, and it's hard for me to just sit there and take that. I feel like it's a personal assault. <laughs> Or doing it to you. <laughs> yes, I'm so anal about that shit. I don't know why. I'm just, I, you know, I'm a cleaner. I'm a clean freak. Like my mom used to come on and go, you could eat off these floors. It's like, yeah, I take care of my shit. You're prideful. There's nothing wrong with that. Because, yeah, no, you can put a little dust in the corner. They go, no, you can't. Well, I got the hand back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be a good house cleaner. I, like I am it. a good house cleaner. You are. You're, oh, I can only see like, I don't know, a five by five, but it looks immaculate. So, well, I, I'll show you around, but I mean, you know, <laughs> certain things I don't want everybody to see, especially <laughs> the sex dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With my job, there is literally <laughs> nothing that would surprise me. Like, I don't Fair care enough. if this stays in the podcast or not, but I had to. <laughs> go to a call at um, a gentleman's house who, Uh, okay, so here's a good firefighter story for you. And um, he had, oh God, I don't even know where to start with this. You know, like those dry seal bags, like for food or, um, or if you have like eight things of um, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he with the vacuum thing, vacuum sealed. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah. So he had vacuum sealed himself which is, I guess, uh, like a form of erotic asphyxiation, but it said like all over the vacuum and the, the, the pack, like do not use without a buddy or like do not use on your own. Oh. So buddy couldn't wait for his buddy. And he was like, fuck it, I'll just do it myself. But like, <laughs> <laughs> as you start to get like vacuum sealed, you have like less mobility. So right. I guess he was like in, in it doing his thing and then like when it got too restrictive he couldn't press the button so we responded to a man who had like erotically asphyxiated himself with wow yeah so like your sex engine ain't got shit on what i've seen i just want to put that out there yeah (laughs) mine's got like flowers and plants and shit well weird fucking dark anyways so dark (laughs) I'm so crazy, but anyway. Who is your um, celebrity crush moving forward? Oh, celebrity crush. Fucking Sean Connery. 
good answer. <laughs> he's sorry, but he's the coolest dude ever. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, did I just say that? Um, you did. Moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sh- I, uh, yeah. I mean, I. But see, that's the thing. I'm trying to think. That's a totally John Connor, answer. Okay, fine. Because I'll, I'll back Trish up. Trish Stratus like didn't even blink, and she was like J Lo. So that's ah. totally acceptable. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is your favorite band or artist? And I want to hear something that deviates from like punk, hardcore, thrash metal. Well, I, I, I just, that's not, uh, well, Motorhead is my favorite band. Of all okay. Time. So, and I always say, if you can make your band 51% Motorhead, 49% GBH, you'll have a great band. So okay. Motorhead for sure, for Motorhead. sure. Motorhead. Do you have a secret vice like drinking a glass of wine in the shower? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. Secret vice. I play Magic the Gathering. Is that a vice? That's a vice. Is that okay? <laughs> Everyone right. might not know about it. That's well, yeah, I guess you're right. And I, I coffee, coffee is my thing. You know? Okay. Iced coffee. It has to be iced though. So you're Stickling. totally like a basic bitch. Like you need your iced coffee. Look, I'm I'm really, really simple. You know what I mean? It's kind of like feed me, fuck me, let me sleep. You know what I mean? What else is there in life? That's all you got to do. I can't believe I just said that too. You're <laughs> pulling a lot of things out of me. My kids are right there. Jesus, Taylor. I'm kind sorry, of fucking children. Sh- kind of fucking show you run in here. Adult it's themed. wild. Yeah. No, I got to, you know, it's like, it, yes, it's wild. It's wild. Whoa. <laughs> I've mind fucked you. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, what wrestler has the best entrance music? Taker. I mean, Classic. well, current current wrestler. Uh, see, there's three guys that I love. It's The Fiend, mm-hmm. but I loved when he was doing the, the Bray Wyatt thing with the, the, the thing. Yep. Um, Taker's obviously music hits and you're just like, what's up? Yep. And, and probably Flair, because, you know, the... Da, well, I forget the name of the song, but it's obviously Space yeah. Odyssey 2001, whatever. But <laughs> I forget the name of the song. Well, next one is what is your drink of choice? But I think we've answered that. Coffee, iced coffee. Now, are you, it's none of my business, but just because it's my podcast and I'll say what I want. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So are you, you don't drink, you don't do drugs, but are, is it because you're sober or you're just, uh, uh, you? Well, let's just say that I have that a question. I, well, I can, I'll answer it, but I just have to do it in a, in a way. Um, I have an allergic reaction to alcohol. Oh, okay. I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I got it. No, okay. no, I, I, I got, I got, I got, uh, sober very young. Okay. Well, good for you. Hey, thank you. You can fucking at least identify that. That is a, yeah. a legit. But it's not. It's it's not like it's not like sober like these. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Know, you. These these fucking whatever these kooks. Yeah. Like it's like a, it's like it's like the loyalty thing. It's like you ain't fucking just shut up. Yeah. Move on. Sober right vegan. Book. All the yeah. That <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I, nothing wrong with vegans because I'm. I you know I play a, I dabble in that. Right. From time to time, like if I'm really like like getting to go on the road i'm gonna be on the road in what a month or so mm-hmm. month or two months and so i'll start like really right really 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 watching what goes into my body okay so and and i've been doing it now for i don't know probably my whole life like if i'm out on the road i eat vegan if it's a choice oh interesting but i very rarely like you know i, I kind of almost do it a lot of the times anyways i'll break down and have an egg or some cheese or some fish Right. You know, every once in a while. But um, I'm fucking Scandinavian. I'm fucking Danish. You know, I need, I need, you know, it's like I you got need bacon. That fish oil. I mean, fuck, I need the fish oil. It's like, you know, my, I don't have blood. I have bacon fat, like running. It's like pork. It's like, <laughs> keeps you young. Absolutely. It keeps you, look at my skin. Right. You're stunning. Yeah. The, the, yeah. What's my favorite beauty pro- product? <laughs> pork fat. Duh. Obviously. So I don't know why you didn't lead with that. <laughs> I know that would have been <laughs> the obvious. Fuck. Can we go back? Like, do a chop yeah. chop? Okay. Rochelle? Back, and then... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. What was your most embarrassing moment on stage?
And so for wrestlers, I always want to hear like a nip slip or some sort of wardrobe malfunction. Oh man, I remember I, I, oh, Christopher Daniels. Oh God, one time. Did his penis fall out or a ball? No, dude. <laughs> so he's wrestling over here in San Francisco at the at the, the, the Keys are, which is like, you know, maybe 10 blocks away from me. And it's like an old, they used to do a lot of the old boxing, San Francisco bo- boxing. And Chris, Chris is a great guy. Yeah, Super yeah, nice Daniels. I've known him for years. Yes. So and it was APW show. So his, he was wearing kind of the short shorts <laughs> and he, he did the move and he was obviously free balling because it, it split <laughs> where his ass was hanging out. So, and, and every time he bent over, you got a shot of... <sighs> his asshole so everybody in the crowd started chanting asshole <laughs> oh, oh. felt so bad for curry man you know what i mean i really felt bad for him but um most embarrassing well contrary to popular belief it wasn't a heroin overdose i went into anaphylactic shock in montreal we were doing three nights there uh-huh. and it's like 4,000 capacity, whatever. Canada's always been very, very good for us. And I love it up there. Um, and Toronto's a great town. Yeah. But I, so it was my birthday. So it was August and maybe 2007, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And I remember it was, it's this, uh, it's either the, the, the third show or the second show. I want to say it was the third, I don't remember, but playing a song. So I got, I had gotten sick and I went to, I, you know, you get one of those rock doctors to come. Yeah. So, and I'm definitely allergic to penicillin. Oh. So I said, um, I'm feeling really sick. I got to, you know, you know, I got to do the rest of this tour or whatever. I need some antibiotics. He said, okay, I'm going to give you something pretty powerful. It's like the stuff that we give you for like uh, anthrax or whatever. Yeah. And I say, listen, I'm allergic to penicillin. If I take penicillin, I'm, I'm a dead man. It's like, no, 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 you're good. So he gives me this thing. And about four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, I can't, I'm having a hard time breathing. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with me? I'm like, you know, starting to feel this shit. I go and I remember that I had my computer and I go on and I look at the, the side effects for the medication. Yeah. And, I, and I'm experiencing six out of 10 of them. E. And, and so I call the road manager. I said, dude, I got to go to the hospital. I'm having six of the, the things, right? Yeah. He says, okay, go. So I, I uh, waked up, woke up somebody, got, I took a cab. Somebody went down there. I think it might've been the drummer, Brett Reed, might've came with me. No, no, no. Somebody, it was my guitar tech. So, cause I knew he would be up 5 a.m. So <laughs> we got, I don't know. He's a vegan. Oh. They don't sleep. So, <laughs> so we go to the, the ER. I get in the hospital bed. They do the thing. They go, okay. They give me an IV, whatever. And I talk to the doctor and he says, no, 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 it's okay. This has nothing to do with penicillin. You know, right. I'm like, okay, keep taking it, whatever. I'm like, okay. So then that was my birthday. So that was the day of my birthday. So get up, do, do the show, take an antibiotic, right? You know, cause I'm got to take them every time that you, you know, keep it on time. I didn't wait till after the show for some reason. I took it before the show playing a song and I'm trying to see Tim. And I'm just like, why can't I fucking see him? And I just go, Poof. Oh no. So in the, in mid song, like third or fourth song in, and I'm just on my back. And then next thing you know, I'm in an ambulance. And it's my first time in an ambulance. And it's in Montreal. And a bunch of French going on. <laughs> and I'm just like, kind of as like surreal thing. Yeah. You know? slow motion. And then, yeah. And I'm just, I remember I'm just, I'm in the hospital. And I've got IVs and tubes in me. And, and then I'm waking up and I see Brett Reed, the drummer, and uh, Tim Shaw, the guitar tech. And then um, uh, some guy next door, the, the guy next to me is like, something's going terribly wrong over there. 
you can just hear all these like things going on. I just, it just made me feel uncomfortable. So I just kind of like unplugged. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. I just like, fuck it. And then we took like four days off and, you know, canceled the next show, which was Pittsburgh or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But then I started seeing that I, because I overdosed on heroin or something. I'm like, what? It's no, I went rock and roll, man. Yeah, man, whatever. But I've had a few like, um, oh, one time we played New York City. Um, I was on tour with my other band and then met Rancid to do an East Coast run mm. and played the show. And then I'm in the car with Punk and Big Chris. And I'm going into the hospital because I, once again, I think I'm like having a heart attack or whatever. I was so severely hydrated. I took like four or five bags of a fluid uh, whatever yes <laughs> and but i remember they t- we went to bellevue hospital in new york city which is like where all the loonies go i was gonna say bellevue that rings a bell yeah, yeah so and, I, and, and there was this <laughs> I remember me and punks walking me back right and then going into the bed i'm in my gown and then there's <laughs> this dude and he's like fighting the cops fighting <laughs> the cops and the cops are trying to restrain him and he looks up and he sees punk and he goes yo punk Best in the world. <laughs> I was like, what's up, bro? And the guy that then starts continuing to fight the cops. That's a legit story. I love that. That really happened. So, so, but that's uh, that's probably the most embarrassing time. Even though I didn't have, I've done things where I've spun and you know done it. You know, yeah, landed on my ass. But then I just flip everybody. Like, hey, fuck you. I meant to do that. Or whatever. But very wrestling of you. Yeah, I've never like, you know had to pee or anything i probably i mean I've, I've been so sweaty where i've had to pee and i just prefer, like fuck it you know but i haven't done that well good for you you don't yeah, every female so, wrestler has peed herself yeah. in the ring i believe that for yeah. some reason they why can, why do you think that is well truthfully anatomically speaking like your ovaries are in your fallopian tubes shouldn't be like a pinball machine so right. <laughs> I literally think your body is going and like every right. time we belly out, I just, I, I, I just don't think we are made to do it, but we, you know, we yeah. do it well and we can still have babies healthily, but you know, just yeah. do a few more Kegels and maybe a little There you go. Yeah. So usually yeah. my last question is finish this lyric, but I am not doing that with you. I am not embarrassing myself to that level. Also, I wanted to ask something else. I've been well, why'd getting... you ask me these two? Because I because you can't say that and then leave me out of it. So you got to ask two now. <laughs> no, no. Usually I say finish this lyric and then I sing something badly and then you sing along with no, me. No, you got to fucking do it. <laughs> so no, no, bullshit. You don't get out. Oh, you so fucking... ask okay. me this. Ask me this first question, then you do it, and then we'll see if we'll we'll see if we can make some some sweet music together. Okay, great. So okay. I've been getting a lot of heat for my. Re- resurrection resurgence into wrestling because um with impact they've given me all this creative uh freedom and my girlfriend rochelle and i who makes my podcast with me she's my producer my editor she went ahead and she wrote lyrics and she hired the sweetest little fawn of a teenage girl named sam smith how cool is that uh yeah. to sing my entrance music and yeah. the fans are like, oh, it's shit and whatever. Cause it was literally recorded during COVID. And right. uh, Rochelle had kind of like recorded things like via Zoom and it was all emailed, put together. And then that's yeah. in my entrance music. So my question for you is, will you listen to it? And will you give like your Lars stamp of approval or maybe you can give us some advice on how to make it better yeah for sure now this is something that you is this your current music yeah we i fucking love but fans are like mm, shit so i, I want- don't i see i thought it was kind of like bubbly and cool and kind of had a little bit it was a little edgy i mean especially for that program right so i i it's mean I, different. Thought, I, I thought it was different I haven't really totally tuned into it because I was more, I, you know, I was more paying attention to see if I saw the Ramones thing in your deal again. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I'd listen to it, but um, I would say that you have to tell me what level of honesty you'd want. And, but honestly, how old is this girl? She is, I'm, I might not get this right. She's like, she's still in university. So 20s. 
yeah, I mean, you know, just given that opportunity for somebody like that hey. to do that, I mean, that's that's cool enough. So I, I I'm not really like, I've never been a guy who will publicly or anyway shame another. Like, there's music I I fucking hate jazz. Jazz can suck it. Like <laughs> fuck jazz, you know. Like fuck jazz. Jazz is fucking stupid. Sorry if I'm that makes me stupid. And fuck you, duh. I'll go back to the quarry. But I hate jazz. Like and pop music. Fuck. Unless you're Beyonce. I don't want to hear Agreed. no Lady Gaga. I don't like Lady Gaga. I don't like any of that shit. You know, it's like, it's mindless to me. Like, I, you know, I, I, you know, whatever. Not, I'm sure she's a nice person, but it's not my trip. Yeah. Right. Okay. But that's the way I, as I've gotten older, other than jazz, I yeah. just kind of accept and just not like, I fucking hate jazz. Fuck jazz. <laughs> so it's just not my thing. I want to know. I don't know. Fucking, you know, came in in the middle of the night and fondled me, obviously. That's without my enough. permission <laughs> yeah, you know with I mean? bed. give me a little two finger well, i guess but, what my um, question is like yeah. i love it i love it but i want to make well, then, it better so i just want your well-trained ear i think uh, rancid is fucking cool like it you. was the reason i reached out to you is because i was a fan of your music and for the simple fact that you're a wrestling fan as well so you know i thought I, well you know what you know i fucking hate let me talk another beef here <laughs> I'm the biggest fucking wrestling fan when it comes to any fucking musician. And I guarantee if we give me any other musician other than probably, you know, Billy Corgan would probably be my equal. Yeah. And I'm just boasting. I mean, he, the guy's obviously got it. You know, he's very much in love with, with the business. I respect him enormously because of that. What he's doing with the NWA is awesome. Yeah. So got a lot of kudos to him, but you give me any other guy, sit down, Let's talk wrestling face to face and, and prove the, the the knowledge. I can boast this. Yeah. And this is kind of like the heel me coming out. <laughs> but um, so, but I've never ever been asked, ever. Yeah. To write a music music for anybody's fucking entrance music. And I I know more pro wrestlers than I know musicians, and it's fucking pissing me off. Well, then let's make this happen. Whether it's, well, you're going to do something for me, it's happening now. <laughs> well, but do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, I this totally is get the it. kind of bullshit. Like, I'm, like, hello, duh, okay. the dude. Well, whatever. I would, that's, well, this is the thing. Like, I love wrestling. You love wrestling. I love music. You love music. Let's, let's, let's can you do something for Taylor well, Wilde? Let me hear your voice first. No, you know, let me no, hear your voice. no, 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 no. This is, this, angelic voice. this is me this is me fucking trying to hang out with arn anderson right now <laughs> let's go bring well, it that's different like if you ask me to like do a backflip <laughs> off the kitchen table no problem but like i really <laughs> don't want anything for you <laughs> fuck hey babe can you do a backflip anyways um that'd be kind of fun do for the kids just just for the kids just for okay, the kids cool. no do the do the song thing i'm ready for it it's kind of like that, you know, name that tune. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but okay, hold on. Don't fuck, come on, Taylor, be wild. <laughs> You're fucking with my gimmick, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Calling your shit out. Let's see. Are you really as tough as the guy? Known. Ruby, 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 so <laughs> But you got to get in better key. I have no key. Hang on a second. Hang on, Hang on a second. Me, 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 me. Hang on. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> right, this might be done. Destination. Destination. <laughs> I can't even do it. Fuck you. Fuck you, Taylor. Oh, fuck. Great. <laughs> <laughs>